بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس دس از سفیور حسین اینڈ ٹوڈے وی شیل ٹاک اباؤٹ فنولوجیکل لیول آف اسٹائلسٹک اینالسس ان دا بگننگ لیکچرز وی ہیو سین دیٹ ان اسٹائلسٹکس وی اینالائز دا لینگویج آف لٹری ورکس ان اٹس ڈفرینٹ اور آل لیولس اینڈ دا فرسٹ لیول وی ٹاک اباؤٹ واز دا لیول آف فنیٹکس اینڈ فنالوجی اور فنولوجیکل لیول of stylistic analysis so uh, we discussed that phonetics and phonology they uh, study and talk about the sound of spoken language or uh, the way words are pronounced so in phonological level we uh, analyze uh, quite a, a number of devices and they are listed as the first uh, thing we study in phonological level is harsh consonants then we have soft consonants monophthongs and diphthongs and alliteration consonants assonance rhyme rhythm uh, onomatopoeia and meter so uh, we have talked about rhythm and meter in our previous lectures and today we shall talk about the rest of uh, these elements so the first thing to discuss in uh, phonetics and phonology is harsh and soft consonants Uh, in language there are uh, you might be familiar with uh, the concept of consonants and in those consonants we have some consonants which are pronounced very firmly emphatically or with uh, quite a lot of stress and they are pronounced uh, with a lot of energy as compared to soft consonants for example we have pa we have ba and da so these are pronounced forcefully or emphatically and these uh, pronouns they uh, sorry consonants they produce uh, an effect which is termed as cacophony in uh, literature and harman uh, dis, uh, he defines cacophony as a harsh unpleasant combination of sounds so if a poet or a writer wants to produce cacophony or an harsh or unpleasant effect using sounds he or she would use harsh consonants and uh, soft consonants are pronounced softly they are uh, spoken softly for example we have ma and wa and na etc and these are softly spoken consonants they produce an effect which is termed as euphony and euphony has been defined by cadden as uh, euphony denotes pleasing mellifluous sounds usually produced by long vowels so if we want to produce a uh, very soft and pleasing sounds we uh, have to use soft consonants along with long vowels so such words will produce the effect euphony where the words will be um, um, sounding pleasing and uh, musical to our ears so we use soft and uh, sorry harsh and soft consonants to produce certain effects in the poetry or in the poem so if you want to talk about an unpleasant and harsh ex- experience or experiment or something very harsh and unpleasant we would uh, use harsh consonants and using them we would produce such words which would uh, produce unpleasant and harsh sounds so those harsh and unpleasant sounds will produce the effect of cacophony uh, which can be used to represent harsh unpleasant bad or evil experiences in life in poetry and if you want to produce uh, if you want to talk about something pleasant something very uh, musical uh, and something kind and benevolent something positive we would uh, use soft consonants along with long vowels by producing an effect uh, which has been termed as euphony and then the next uh, element we would analyze in uh, at phonological level of stylistic analysis are monophthongs and diphthongs in monophthongs uh, you might be familiar are single pure vowel sounds like e and e and a and a etc and diphthongs are sounds produced by the combination of two vowels in a single syllable like uh, we have uh, the diphthong i like the, in the words crime like and we have and uh, words like break 
and rain so the uh, diphthong is a and we have a uh, a diphthong like au like slow and do and moan so it's these are uh, where two vowels are combined in a single syllable these are diphthongs you might have studied them in phonetics and phonology so these monophthongs and diphthongs these sounds are used by poets to produce uh, pleasant sounds in poems or as we have said earlier you know, uh, we have seen these sounds when combined with soft consonants they produce euphony or pleasant sounds in poems and such words and such sounds such uh, this euphony is used by poets by writers to to talk about pleasant experiences kind experiences positive experiences in uh, their poems then we have alliteration is uh, another level of uh, phonological analysis it is a figure of speech and it is defined as uh, the repetition of the initial consonants in two or more words so if you find uh, in a piece of uh, writing in a poem or in a line of poetry where the same consonant is repeated in two or more words you would term it as alliteration for example in uh, we have uh, a stanza from the rhyme of ancient mariner by st coleridge and here you can see in the example that uh, in the first line it says the fair breeze blew the white foam flew so you can see that the ba sound is repeated in the word breeze and uh, in the right next word blue and you can also see the fa sound it has been mentioned uh, used in the second word fair and then we have in foam and flu then in the second line the furrow followed free so again the fa sound the consonant is repeated and you can note that it is the initial consonant sound of the word so if initial consonant is repeated in two or more words it will be termed as alliteration and what does it do its function is to create flow of music and it makes sounds more emphatic and emotive the consonants uh, they are pro produced and pronounced emphatically forcefully and thus when uh, initial consonants are repeated the words and their uh, pronunciation would uh, and their sound would become uh, emphatic and this emphasis this uh, beautiful rhythm creates emotive effects it uh, affects our emotions and we uh, get uh, indulged in the emotions the writer want, wants our, us to uh, feel and these uh, uh, this sound of uh, a kind of sound and this repetition makes poems attractive and appealing so if the writer had used words with different consonant sounds again it would have been a kind of uh, and a piece of poetry but as compared to use of normal words without this alliteration or without this figure of speech uh, the poem would have been um, not that much attractive and appealing but the use of alliteration has made the poem attractive and appealing and uh, it is it becomes easier for us to learn the poem by heart to remember it and to memorize it completely and the next uh, level of phonological analysis is assonance and it is again a repetition in alliteration uh, we saw that it was repetition of initial consonant sound in adjacent words assonance is the repetition of identical or similar vowel sounds especially in stressed syllable in a sequence of nearby words so if we have some words which are located nearby in a line of poetry and uh, those uh, words have stressed syllables in them and in those stressed syllables uh, the uh, same or similar vowel sounds are repeated we would term it as assonance for example we have two words mad and cat you can see uh, the vowel sound in both of these words it is the same or similar uh, similarly we have ten and beds the same vowel sound is repeated loud and shout the same sound vowel sound cool and moon and in both of these words the same vowel sound is repeated so uh, what does assonance do it enhances the musical effect 
म्यूजिकल इफेक्ट इज क्रिएटेड बाय अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स इन अ पोइट्री मीटर क्रिएट्स म्यूजिकल इफेक्ट रिदम इज द म्यूजिकल इफेक्ट अलिट्रेशन क्रिएट्स म्यूजिकल इफेक्ट soft uh, consonants uh, along with long vowels they create musical effect and similarly assonance uh, also helps in enhancing and in increasing that musical effect and by creating specially internal rhyme and internal rhyme is uh, having similar sounding words inside a line of poetry whereas rhyme is actually uh, similar sounding words at the end of the line of poetry generally we would also discuss rhyme later but to mention difference between internal rhyme and rhyme rhyme is when the words at the end of the line have same sound we call it rhyme whereas if words inside that line of poetry they have similar sounds that would be termed as internal rhyme and uh, it also helps in establishing mood of the poem or the atmosphere of the poem and a mood is the general atmosphere or the general feeling we get from the poem it may be pessimistic it may be optimistic it may be uh, happy it may be um, sad etc so uh, it, we have an example here uh, from a poem uh, by robert frost stopping by woods on a snowy evening and this is a, a stanza from that poem and here you can see the underlined Uh, vowels are similar and they have been used inside the line of uh, uh, inside all the lines in this poem so he gives his e sound or e vowel is repeated in gives and his and similarly a uh, sound is repeated in harness and bells so he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake the only other sounds the sweep so e sound is repeated in only and sweep and similarly in easy and downy they are you can see they sound similar and similarly uh, the e sound in lovely and deep are repeated uh, so this repetition of identical or similar or same vowel sound is assonance and it helps in enhancing the musical effect Uh, by creating internal rhyme then we have consonance consonant is uh, consonance is the repetition of the consonant sound in the words before or after different vowel sounds so you uh, might get a bit confused between alliteration and consonance alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds consonance is the repetition of consonant sounds so both are repetition of consonant sounds but in consonance we have another uh, condition for call it uh, for calling it as consonance and that is that it is the repetition of consonant sounds in the words before or after different vowel sounds so we do not have this condition of before or after different vowel sounds in alliteration but here in consonance we have the condition that the repetition of consonant sounds should be before or after different vowel sounds in those words for example uh we have the da sound in this these two words lad and bad so we have uh consonant sounds here in both of these words but the vowel sound in these words is different another difference uh you should note bit uh, between consonants and alliteration is alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sound so if we look back here you can see the initial consonant uh, is repeated like breeze ba is in the beginning of the word and in blue the ba is again at the beginning of the word whereas in consonants you can see the da sound is not at the beginning it's rather at the end of the word so alliteration repetition of consonant sounds initial consonant sounds in the, those which are there in the beginning of the words and in consonants the repetition of consonant sounds they can be in the middle they can be in the beginning they can be uh, in the end part of the word but the vowel sounds in those adjacent words should be different similarly we have uh, look and black so la sound is here in the uh, beginning and here in the middle but here Uh, the vowel sounds is different than here and similarly we have blunt and flat 
la sound is again uh, the same in both of these words but here the vowel is different and in the flat the vowel vowel is different similarly the sound t is also here different we have blind and pluck the la sound is again repeated but with here we have a different vowel sound and here we have a different vowel sound so this is consonants and consonants aids uh, and uh, lyrical feeling to the poetry again lyrical feeling is the musical feeling to the poetry because of the repetition uh, we feel a kind of music in uh, the uh, the line of the poetry and uh, as consonants is the repetition of consonant sounds the consonant sounds whether it is consonants or alliteration or any other general word where consonant sounds are used consonant sounds they are pronounced forcefully emphatically and therefore therefore they help in making a powerful structure uh, in the line of poetry and because of that powerful structure because of that emphasis the words and the sounds they got imprinted in our minds it becomes easy for us to remember and memorize them and because it affects our memory it helps in uh, creating a clearer imagery and what is imagery imagery is again an image that is formed in our minds so the powerful structure the sounds make an impact on our mind and imagery is again a picture in our mind so both of these relate to each other and help each other we have an example from a poem by emily dickinson if we can see it was later when the summer went so you can see uh, here and here different vowel uh, sorry consonant sounds are repeated and then when the cricket came here again ka sound is here and in the beginning of the cricket and here we have ka sound again and here we again have the ka sound here the uh, vowel is different and here the vowel is again different and uh, here we have the la sound repeated gentle and clock here a different vowel and here is a different vowel and uh, that's consonants then we have rhyme rhyme is uh, a very easy element to study and uh, to identify in a poem and rhyme is when poetic lines uh ending in similar sounding words when at the end of a poetic uh, one or more poetic lines the same sounding words are there for example uh, the the childhood poem we all have are familiar with is twinkle twinkle little star and how i wonder what you are so you can see star and r are similar sounding words so this is rhyme and Uh, the effect of rhyme or the function of rhyme is to make recital or uh, reading of a poem pleasing because of the rhyme uh, it is very easy and it becomes very pleasing for us to read poem and it also gives uh, musicality and rhythm to a line of poetry or to a poem then we have uh, anamatapia and anamatapia is the formation of a word from a sound associated with what is named for example uh, <clears throat> the bees they produce a sound which is similar to buzz and the word used for that sound is again buzz or uh, the sound of an explosion is like uh, the sound of boom and the word for that explosion is again boom b w m boom so such words which represent the sounds uh, they are named after are uh, such uh, a situation would be onomatopoeic situation and here in a, uh, one of the tennyson's poems we can find such words as the moon of dows in immemorable arms and murmuring of innumerable bees so bees murmur and the sound they produce is similar to this word murmur and similarly doves the sound the doves uh, produce is very similar to moan and the word is also moan so the word and the sound it represents both uh, have similar sound in this condition this effect is called as anamatopoeia and this uh, such uses of such words uh, helps us to hear the sounds of the words they reflect we can easily imagine 
these sounds or the meaning of these sounds and thus such words are more emphatic as compared to usual words if the poet has said the sound of doves in immemorial elms the word sound here would not have produced the effect as the word moan here is creating and similarly the sound of innumerable bees so the word sound or in its place if you use the word murmuring the this word uh, it creates more emphasis as compared to a common or a usual word so this uh, is all for today and uh, when we study the phonological level of uh, a poem or a piece of writing we generally study these uh, uh, elements which uh, we had seen in the beginning the harsh consonants the soft consonants monophthongs diphthongs alliteration and consonants assonants rhyme rhythm onomatopoeia and meter uh, the reason i left out rhythm and meter is that we have discussed it earlier in uh, in uh, different lectures then uh this lecture and the rest of the levels or devices we study in phonological level are these and if you are familiar with these the definitions and uh the kinds of all these things it would be very much easy for you to analyze a poem at its phonological level because the sound level of a word or a line uh it has a certain impact on the meaning of those words and when you analyze a poem you look for its meaning so if you know all these uh phonetic devices phonological devices that writers use or which are there in a piece of poetry it would be very much easy for you to derive meaning and derive various interpretations from that piece of writing or from that poem thank you very much